Hey everybody, it's Rockula, and welcome back to Rockula Retrospective. This is the weekend full review of Season 5, Episode 10 of The Walking Dead, titled Them. Just got dicked. So this is going to be the weekend full review, and uh, if you want to watch the chronological recap, you can click here for what I watched on Sunday night and did a, uh, did a recap reaction review. So what we're going to do now is talk about some of the deeper aspects of the episode and some of the things that I missed, some of the things that other people missed. And I went around the internet and listened to everybody's reviews, and here's what I found. We got two things starting at the beginning of the episode that let us know how dire the situation is. We got Maggie crying, and then she licks the tears off of her hand. Then you got Daryl eating worms. So that shows us we've got pretty much a bad situation, because before they were exhausted, now let's add... Uh, hunger and thirst to this equation and you've got a pretty dismal episode it's been three weeks since Atlanta and everybody's pretty much at their wits end and a lot of people are questioning their existence okay so let's talk about the situation at the bridge I thought that was really clever that it was more of a path of least resistance way and I can't believe they haven't shown more intricate or elaborate walker deaths you know like driving them off of a cliff or a bridge or off of a rooftop, but something just to trick walkers. Cause let's face it, walkers are dumb. You know, if you look at them just pushing people out of the way and stepping out of the way, them walkers are stupid. Here's the other thing that I'm noticing is that they're not using some of the tricks that we already know that work. Of course, they, uh, several members have used the smear guts all over you and walk through the crowd of walkers, but why aren't they using Michonne's trick of chopping off the arms and the jaw and leading them around on a leash? Because that seems to be the most safest way to travel on foot. When Maggie finds the walker in the trunk, a lot of people had questions about who did it. Some people are thinking that it was the Wolves gang. I just wonder maybe if it was just some kind of a coincidence or a uh, just somebody was infected or they were sick or they were dying. And somebody didn't want to have to deal with them turning, so they put them in the trunk, and then they just left them in the trunk. So that that could be one thing, but who knows? It could be the wolves. It could be some gang that's going around and tying people up and putting them into trunks and letting them die. Also, I noticed here there was two separate close-ups of bugs. And I'm just wondering, is that symbolism, or were they just trying to be arty? So Abraham is drinking some booze, and, you know, he doesn't seem to care that it's going to make him more dehydrated. And I'm wondering if he thinks that he's been infected when Sasha was swinging the knife around at the bridge. She nicked Abraham on the on the left shoulder. And uh, when I when I paused it, it looked like there was some blood coming out. I don't know. It wasn't a lot. And by the closer to the end of the episode, it's just a red line. It doesn't even look like a big cut anymore. So we'll see if he gets infected from it. But, uh, you know, he seems to bring up the point to Sasha that, you know what? <laughs> You're the one that's going to cause more deaths with your behavior. Now, here's the point where I got to admit that I was wrong. And I like admitting that I was wrong. I like when this show proves me wrong and I go off on this tangent and they were like, no, this way. I don't like being able to second guess a show I know it's kind of a predictable, every show gets predictable up to a certain point, but I like not being able to figure it out. So I was wrong about this gang who uses wolves, uh, trained wolves as their, as their advance guard. T 
Turns out that it was just a pack of dogs that had gotten together. And uh, thanks to Sasha's quick thinking, we now have one of the two problems solved and they've got themselves some dog meat to eat. Now we get to the part where Maggie explains her ambivalence about Beth. I'm still not buying it. You know, when she didn't know where Glenn was, she didn't know if he was alive or dead or whatever. She just plowed through the zombie apocalypse until she found Glenn. But, you know, there was more evidence that Beth might be alive when she didn't see her than Glenn. And yet she was still ambivalent about it. Didn't try to find out if she was still alive or not. So I'm just not buying it. Now we got Daryl off in the woods by himself being an emo and putting a cigarette out on himself. And, you know, I get it. He's been numb for years. Who knows how long he was numb before the Walker apocalypse because he had a pretty terrible childhood. So this guy's been numb all of his life. And uh, who knows, maybe you got to put a cigarette out on your hand to get yourself to cry over a girl. Everybody comes back from scouting and they find a supply of water bottles with a note that says from a friend. And I, I don't know about this. And you guys can tell me if you know any different about this in the comments, but it would seem to be very hard to take the twist cap off of a bottle of water. You know how it cracks. I don't know if you could take that off somehow, maybe if you heat it up till it expands or whatever, but how could you take that off, pour something in, and then put it back on, and then have it to where it cracks again? The second way you could tamper with the water is to inject it with something, but all you'd have to do is just squeeze the bottle and see if the water comes out of a hole. So those are the two ways that I can think of to tamper with a bottle of water. If you guys know something different, let me know, but I'd say it's a safe bet. If that seal cracks, then it's good water. So now we continue with the religious theme when they get into the barn and that is Maggie looks down and sees the Bible and I'm starting to realize now it's not about religion as a context of believing in a Christian God. It, this is about faith, faith that it's worth living because eventually you're going to get out of it. Michonne has, has vehemently stated that there has to be something else out there. We have to find a way to live normally and live happily. And Rick is kind of off to one side where he's like, I don't know if he agrees with it or not, but he's saying, look, until we find it, we're dead. Every day, wake up, expect to die. And then Daryl shows that he's finally come around and he says, we ain't them. Hence the title of the episode. And I'm not sure if Daryl has resolved all of his issues, but at the most, he has resolved his issues enough to want to keep living. Now, this comes up on the common sense moment. I know I haven't had a common sense moment in a couple episodes. I kind of forgot. But you got the point where Daryl goes up to the door and he sees the walkers coming. And I can understand wanting to to brace the door and not make any noise to not attract the walkers any further. But Sasha sees Daryl gets up and runs over to the door. When Sasha gets up, why does she not wake other people up and tell them to wake other people up? I timed it. Uh, I know with cuts and everything, a scene isn't exactly as long as the real time is, but I, uh, it was a minute and 10 seconds till everybody got to the door and uh it's just a common sense issue with me it's there's not a lot of them lately but that's one of them lots of people are having issues with the the storm they don't believe that a storm could wreck an area around a barn and yet not destroy the barn but uh that's what a tornado can do and i looked it up there have been tornadoes as late in Virginia as 2014. So it is possible for a tornado. We're not talking about a big Godzilla sized tornado like they have down here in Texas and Oklahoma where it's, you know, three miles wide and it just wrecks an entire city. 
there are smaller tornadoes that happen. So yeah, it is possible for a tornado to go right by the barn, not hit the barn and yet take all those walkers and smash them. And this is where I'm going to reference the other zombie show, which is Z nation. And obviously this is a spoiler for that. Those guys make Sharknado as well, and they reference Sharknado with an episode where there is a tornado picking up zombies and spitting them out. Now that's, I can believe that. That's, you know, that's something where I can suspend my disbelief. But what I can't suspend my disbelief is when a tornado takes a human body, even if it is a reanimated corpse, spins it around with all that debris and dust and rocks and all of that stuff, you can't tell me that one, it's not going to get a blow to the head, but two, all of that contortion is going to crush bones. And then when you throw a body, you know, a couple of miles and it lands, I don't care where it lands, it's going to be crushed. So the zombie doesn't just get back up again. Uh, in Z Nation, they did, but in this one, they didn't. So I'm okay with that because, you know, I can accept a world where there's animated corpses but I can't accept a world where if all your bones are crushed, you can still get up. I'm not really clear on the meaning about the jewelry box. I don't know if it means something from a previous episode, but, uh, and I also don't understand what the deal is, why it all of a sudden started working when our new character shows up and his name is Aaron. Now, Aaron seems pretty clean cut for me. You know, he's got a haircut, he's shaved, he probably doesn't stink. And, uh, you know, what's going on with that? And I, By the way, tell me if you understand why the jewelry box all of a sudden started to, to work, because I have no idea. But he shows up, and uh, I suspect he's the guy that gave them the water because he knows who Rick is. And this is where I wanted to go and start looking... For Aaron's character, by the way, Aaron is supposedly the first openly gay male character. We already had um, Tara, but uh, Aaron is supposed to be a uh, gay male. But uh, there, there's a lot of stuff running around on the internet. I almost got spoiled when I uh, looked up Aaron, but uh, he's he he's either with a huge a uh, hugely successful group because he's clean and shaved and, and looks fresh as a daisy, or he's been stowed away somewhere in a bunker where nobody's ever found him. And he's just ready now to get everybody to share in his good fortune. Either way, I have no idea. They're also throwing a around uh, this character's name, uh, Negan. And I don't know anything about Negan either. Cause once again, I don't, I try not to spoil myself, but here's where we come into predictions. And this is just something that I put together myself. Cause I was looking at the map. They said we're 60 miles outside of DC, which means they got to be South West of DC. And I hear people talking about the Alexandria safe zone. And I noticed that, Alexandria, Virginia, are they talking about Alexandria, Virginia? Because I, you know, I just kind of put two and two together here and on the map, it ain't very far away. So it looks like they're pretty close to DC and Exal Alexandria, the Alexandria safe zone, if that's going to in fact exist. And hell that makes, I just, I just had a thing here. What if Aaron is from the Alexandria safe zone? So, we're going to find out on Sunday night and I'm going to do a reaction review on that. Hopefully I might get meat pie. I think I might have some other guests. I'm going to start putting guests for the next three episodes, you know, whatever, but I will see you Sunday night for episode 11 of the walking dead. And it is called the distance. <laughs>